Welcome. You've made it to the final part of this tale. Let's get straight into it, shall we? This is Redbeard Luther. We need to make a bridge. I am carving a bridge out of Indian rosewood, a timber often found on bridges of stringed instruments, as it is light and strong, allowing for a smooth transfer of energy from the string into the soundboard. This will make a very pure sound. I am laminating the bridge to enable the grain of the rosewood to align vertically, allowing the strongest join to withstand the pull of the strings. If this step was missed, the bridge would fail under the pressure of the strings. Indian rosewood would not have been used on lyres made in the first millennium. Instead, they would have been carved from animal horn, willow, or even amber and bronze, materials that were readily available at the time. I am filing the slots of the bridge for the strings to sit in. These must be filed smoothly enough to ensure the best transfer of energy from the strings. For a future lyre, I would like to build a taller bridge, which would create more tension on the strings at the bridge. This would make the string slot filing much easier. I am cutting a leather strip to glue to the soundboard to protect it from the strings, where they are tied to the string block. I also really enjoy the aesthetics of the leather. Time for final sanding before finishing. I have a chance to finalise the shape of the layer and get it nice and smooth. Perhaps the most famous example of Anglo-Saxon art is the epic poem Beowulf. It is a fantasy set in the harsh world of 6th century pagan Scandinavia. Beowulf is a warrior hero who comes to the aid of the Danish king whose land is terrorised by the monster Grendel. Beowulf kills Grendel, and also his mother, leaving the land in peace. Years later, his own homeland is plagued by a terrible dragon. 
Beowulf tracks the monster to his lair and manages to slay him, but is mortally wounded in the battle. He was greatly honoured by his people with a huge burial mound in the sea. This is similar to King Radwald's burial at Sutton Hoo. This epic poem would have been recited with the accompaniment of the Anglo-Saxon lyre throughout the island of Britain, maybe even beyond. I am finishing the lyre with woodworker's beeswax. It is not a strong finish, but it does seal the timber, giving it protection from dust, dirt and elements. It also brings out the grain in a really pleasant way. You've made it this far into the tale, now it's time to hear this enchanting instrument. Here is a short improvisation performed by myself. So what happened to this instrument, which had such an important cultural and social role amongst the Anglo-Saxons? After the famous Norman victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, the power of the Anglo-Saxons waned. About a century later, the lyre was seen as a symbol of English cultural pride, and in an attempt to quash any ideas of rebellion, by royal order, the Anglo-Saxon lyre was banned from the realm. That in itself tells us how important this instrument of expression was to the Anglo-Saxon people. A group of tribes who came to Britain amid the ruin of the Western Roman Empire united and forged a nation, England. This instrument was not just entertainment, but a symbol to rally behind. After being forgotten for many centuries, it has been found and being rebuilt and played again by enthusiasts from around the world. This tale has come to an end. However, there are many more to come. Where will we go next? Please join me on my next adventure. This is Redbeard Luthery.